everybody. Scott Kelby here. And RC here. Welcome to the Lightroom Show. Tips, tricks, and ideas all inside a Lightroom. Now, Scott, this week you have a little tip. I got a little tip. Now, the first part you're going to probably already know. It's the, it's, the first one's not the tip. But in your, when you're in Lightroom, if you have sensor dust or any kind of spots or specks or anything on your image, which is the worst thing in the world to have, right. you know why it's so bad if you open up an image and you see like sensor dust? Mm -hmm. Because it's not on that picture. It's, it's on, on all every of picture. Yeah. All right, so in this case, there, uh, Lightroom does have a feature that you probably know about in Lightroom 5 called uh, Visualize Spots. You go to the spot removal tool, and down in the toolbar, you have this thing called Visualize Spots. You turn it on, and it kind of, any spots that it sees, right, it kind of just helps you find them. So that's a really good tip. You need to know that it's there. And there's a slider to help you be able to fine tune it and see it better, right? And depending on the image, it, it works better to drag it to the right or to the left. In this case, uh, if you drag it to the right, you can, oh, there's some extra ones we picked up here. Well, my tip is actually about something else. Hmm. My tip is about making sure that you don't miss anything in the image that needs fixing. Um, so obviously the, the visualized spots helps, but this trick is to make sure that you check every single inch of your image. This is something that you do right before you either save the file or print the file. It's more important to do it when you print the file because what happens is you don't find this mess until you print it. You're holding that print, you're like, oh, the, oh no, and then you gotta reprint the whole thing. I just posted something on my website where I was like, oh guys, take a look at this. Awesome picture, two and a half feet by four foot picture of the Burj Khalifa that I did. I printed it, I sent it to the base, it came in. Great. One of the first comments that came back on Facebook, you missed a sensor spot three quarters of the way oh. up on the image. Oh, well, this sure is enough, I look at it and I'm like, oh, God. It's not no. going to happen now, even if you have an ugly photo like the one I do here. Oh. All right, here's what we're going to do. First, you're going to zoom in to whatever, one to one or whatever you like, and drag this little thing up in the corner. So in the navigator panel, you're going to drag this thing up in the, in the right corner. Now what you're going to use is the page up and page down keys. And I want to show you how this works uh, in Lightroom to make sure that you don't miss a single spot of this. Now, I'm working on a MacBook Pro, and so there's not actually keys that say page up, page down. So you hold the FM, the function key, and then you use the arrow keys, the up arrow and down arrow and left and right, but you're only gonna have to use up and down. Watch, I hold the function key, when I hit the down arrow, look, it, look at the navigator panel, and it moves down exactly one square, and shows you that part of the image, and then one square and one square. What's it do when it hits the bottom? It shrinks to make sure you see the bottom, and then watch, it goes exactly one square over. And so this way, you see every single bit of the entire image and it scrolls all the way through. Do you know how quickly you can check your image real quick? I hate myself. I'm sorry, bro. I should have <laughs> Well, you know what it is? If you forget to check, it doesn't matter what cool trick you know. Uh, but this takes you all the way through the image to make sure you hit every, and look at it, it does that little corner just to make sure. Oh, so man. that's my little quick tip to start us off today. You've got a little something more in depth. Now, last week you did a tip um, on the brightness, on brightness of, right. of prints. Well, it's one of those things where it's like a lot of the times the print section always confuses people. And they're like, well, I don't know. There's so many buttons. There's so many dials. And, and how many questions do we have on Lightroom Killer Tips? Quite, well, talk quite about printing. So here we go. So, uh, so I figured it, it would be a good time for us to just kind of walk through the process and the things that I think that are big gotchas when you're working with it. Probably the number one gotcha that you have when you're working with prints is that when you're printing on something, you need to be able to download something called an ICC profile. And it's a file that sits as almost kind of like a translator between your computer and what the printer is actually capable of doing. But it's more important than that in that it's not just based on the printer itself. It's based on the printer and the paper. So, so isn't it important for Lightroom to know what printer you're printing on and what paper, paper you're printing on to help you make the best possible print. Absolutely, and that's what you need to do. So the first thing that you do, now when you're going, when you're on the Epson website and you download drivers for your Epson printer, you'll have all of the ICC profiles built in for you. And yeah, Canon as well, a lot of the times the drivers install default profiles. However, when you're working with specialty papers and you know off type papers, it's always a good idea for you to go back to the website and take a look and see if there is specific papers for your printer. So in this case, I went to the Epson website, and you'll notice that the, for the 3880, right, you could select a specific printer here. So I own 3880, we have, you have the 3880. How much do these profiles cost? 
free. They're free. Absolutely free. You just got to go to the, the paper manufacturer's website. Right. You're using Epson paper in this case. Right. What if you're using something like Hanamule? Hanamule, you just go right over here. You go right onto the main page of the Hanamule website, right inside of here. Look, ICC profiles. Actually, I cheated because I brought you right in there. This is the main page. You'll see that one of the first sections right there says ICC profiles. So all you have to do is download these and install these on your computer. Now, some of them you actually double click and it just installs. Right. Some of them you have to go through a manual installation and the instructions will be usually on the paper yeah, itself. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Right. Now, that's probably the first thing. The second thing is once you have that set up, let's see, right now I have this one print that I did and I want to get this printed. The first thing that you'll do is you'll go into your page setup, obviously select the type of paper that you're using, paper size, the, the yeah. actual printer, that's easy. Don't go here to the print settings. Skip that, huh? Skip this first. What I would do instead is I would come over here, once you set up your layout, how big, or how much you want of right. that stuff, go down here to this section here under color management. More often than not, this is gonna be set as managed by printer. Yeah, that's the default setting. That's I think, the default setting. By printer. So if you go over here, click on this, you'll see that you have a series of ICC profiles that you'll have installed. Now, if you don't see the one that you have in your list, click on other. Once you see the other, you'll see all of the ones that you have installed in your computer. And sometimes they're a little hard to read, so you might want to kind of open this up. But let's just say, for example, I want to print on premium glossy photo paper. I would click on premium glossy photo paper, and now when I click OK, you'll see that it also jumps into this list as well. Right, now it's available to you. So now you've selected the printer, the side, you know, under the page setup, you've selected the printer and the type of paper that you want, or the size of paper you want, under the color management section, you've selected the type of paper that you're using for the ICC profile. The third section now, you go back over to print settings, and under the print settings, you'll have an area here called printer settings. You click on that, and you'll notice that color mode is off. You have, and you're not doing any color management on the printer side. All you, you need to, because you did it in Lightroom. Lightroom. So now all of that stuff is taken care of. The only thing that you really have to do is make sure that you select the media type. So in this case, you would go to photo paper, premium glossy photo paper. Here's the trick with this. A lot of the times people are like, I have no idea which one to use for this. When you download those ICC profiles from Hanamule, from Epson and all that stuff, yeah. that setup file that they give you usually includes an ICC profile and includes a PDF for install and they'll tell you when you select the printer, make sure that you use this media type. Right, it'll tell you which paper to use. So there's no guesswork. You just have to follow what they told you on that paper. So once you do that, you save that, you're off and running to the races. Now last week we talked a little bit about the print adjustment. Obviously right. add a little bit of print adjustment to compensate for well, the fact that you're bright. Don't look what RC's doing. Go back go and last week. Week. <laughs> watch last week. So that's it, and a lot of the times, that will take care of 90% of the problems that people have with printing. Right, and we'll dig a little further in future episodes, but. That, that right there, which, which you just showed them, that's the heart of getting mm -hmm. color management to work for you, and combined with what you showed last week. Puts it all together. Puts it together to get you images that look, number one, much more like your screen and much more accurate color. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, you've got a tip on using the histogram and a I photographer do. you can watch. We'll see you guys back here absolutely. in a bit. Absolutely. Welcome back to Lightroom Show RC here. Now, Scott, you've got a tip on histogram stuff. I got a histogram tip. Let's this hear. is only for histogram freaks and you know who you are. <laughs> All right, take a look at the image we have on screen here and take a look at the histogram up in the right hand corner. One of the problems with a histogram like this is you look at it and it really doesn't tell you much about the most important part of this photo, which is her face, right? right? So you're getting a reading of the overall image. And when you're reading on someone on a white background, on a gray background, or a black background, the histogram can be very misleading. When what you really care about is, am I holding the tones in the face and things like right. that? Here's the trick. The trick is very simple. Grab the crop tool, put it right over, and just drag right over her face. Now you're getting a reading of the stuff that matters. Look at the histogram now. 
Now you can really see where you're at. You can really see the tones. Uh -huh. And then when you're done looking at the histogram or making changes in the basic panel that will affect the histogram, of course, you know, you can just grab the histogram and drag it, right? Um, hit escape and you're right back to the image in the right way you are. So Pretty clever. Just a little quick tips. <laughs> it's just for you histogram people. You know what I'm I, talking about. I like that. I like that. All right, listen. So I've got a keyboard shortcut. It's a very basic, easy keyboard shortcut. And it kind of plays off of what you did last week, which it, it's kind of two, really. Right? So the crop, uh, using the crop tool, right? So whenever you use the crop tool, a lot of the times I hate having all of the distracting stuff kind of in the way here. Yeah. Right? So what I'll do is I'll usually turn off these two panels on, that, on those sides, and I'll turn off the bottom panel, right? Having that all set, my favorite of all is just to hit the L key. If you hit the L key once when you're using Lightroom, what that's gonna do is it's gonna dim the display a little bit, right? You can kind of see it here, right? If I hit L, you'll see that everything is kind of just dim. You hit the L again, it takes it off completely. So a lot of the times when I wanna make crops and things like that, I want to just look at the picture. I don't wanna work with anything else. I just want to focus and on the crops you, and in the picture. I, what I love about lights out cropping, you don't see the areas you've cropped away. Mm -hmm. All you see is your picture. So if I were to take this down, right? Let's say if I take this down here, you're not seeing anything else and you can make better decisions about how you want to work with that picture. So lights out tends to be probably one of my most favorite things to do when I'm working with kind of adjustments inside of Lightroom. I love lights out cropping. All right, now you have a website. All right, we're gonna wrap things up with uh, each week we like to fin uh, turn you on to, I don't like the way I said that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to turn you on to a, a <laughs> photographer that you may not have seen. This guy's one of my favorites, Julian Calverly. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. He's a UK-based photographer. This guy has won so many awards for his work that when you look at his, like his, when you go to juliancalverly.com, he has all these like things like behind the scenes and this and that and the other, and one of them is just awards. <laughs> He's got so many awards, he can have a category for awards. But he does these wonderful, these wonderful images and... And what I love about these are, these are composites. Great work. So I love his lighting. I love the, the people that he gets for his images. He, I think he just does some, I, man, I got some slow internet connection today, don't I? I think I'm on dial up. But anyway, I, just, I think he's just got tremendous work and he, he does really great automotive stuff, really great portrait stuff. He's definitely somebody worth checking out. Hey, I want to thank everybody who's been giving us feedback in the, on the shows uh, over at LightroomKillerTips.com. That's where that's kind of the home for this show. Right. And of course, it's on on Kelby TV as well, and we we run it everywhere that right, right, yeah, Kelby One touches. But uh, that's that's where we get a lot of the ideas. That's why RC has been focusing these first couple of shows on print is because we're taking your 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 suggestions and your ideas. We take them very seriously. Now, to that end, if you want to leave us more suggestions, make sure that you go to the Lightroom Killer Tips website and you'll see this post, you'll see this come up, you'll see articles that we do, leave us feedback, leave us comments, tell us the kinds of things that you want to be able to see, who knows? You might be able to see your stuff right here on the show. So, Well, that wraps up another episode. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, RC. Thank you very much, sir. And we'll catch you guys next week. Take care.